AMD's graphics cards have long been perceived to age better than their competition, thanks to performance improvements brought by driver updates. Fans have even coined the term fine wine to describe the phenomenon. Tech Power Up put this theory to the test in 2021 by measuring how well AMD 6800 XT held up to Nvidia's 3080 after their first year and found a very clear trend showing that AMD's Radeon is running better and better in new releases. We'll use Tech Power Up's data to extend their analysis to all cards released in the last decade, since this is the only site we know that summarizes all their game results into one chart that shows how graphics cards stack up against each other in each resolution. They do change the games they use to benchmark the GPUs to keep up with whatever's popular, and some may argue that makes their data unsuitable to track the improvement in performance in the games that were used to test GPU performance at launch. However, their data does demonstrate how well their graphics cards run the most popular games and the most relevant titles, whatever those may be at any given time, and consumers would find that information much more useful than how GPU performance has improved in the older games that were used to test the graphics cards at launch. Furthermore, Tech Power Up uses the latest drivers at the time of the review, and they do not recycle performance results. We'll compare how relative performance changed over the years with seven generations. The 680 and 7970s, the 780s and 290s, Maxwell and Fury, Polaris, Pascal and Vega, Turing and RDNA, Ampere and RDNA 2. RDNA 3 and Nvidia's 4000 series have launched too recently to have aged sufficiently for a comparison at this time, so their performance might be revisited in a future video. To start, let's wind the clock back to early 2012 and analyze the first generation that exhibited this remarkable endurance the Radeon 7900 series. The 7970 was the first 28 nanometer GPU on the market, though it soon had to contend with competition from Nvidia's GTX 680. The 680 was 7.52% ahead of the 7970 at 1080p performance, and a 4.17% ahead at 1600p when it launched in March of 2012. Not to be outdone, AMD reclaimed the performance throne with the 7970GHz edition, which outstripped the 680 by 2% at 1080p and 8.7% at 1600p at the time of its launch in June 2012. Fast forward one year to May 2013, and the 7970GHz edition's lead had shrunk to 3.8% in 1600p performance, while the 680's lead over the regular 7970 rose to 5.3%. In its first year, the 680 had gained 1.13% on the 7970 and 4.9% on the 7970 gigahertz edition at 1600p performance. Moving down to 1080p, the 680 reached parity with the 7970 gigahertz edition and its lead over the regular 7970 rose to 9.2%. In its first year, the 680 had gained 1.68% on the 7970 and 2% on the gigahertz edition in 1080p performance jumped six months ahead to November 2013, the 680 had overtaken the 7970 GHz edition and was now 1.39% faster at 1080p performance, while its lead over the regular 7970 rose to 10.6%. Moving up to 1600p though, the 7970 GHz edition was still 4.47% ahead of the 680, while the 680's lead over the regular 7970 had shrunk to 4.69%. In six months, the 7970 had gained 0.61% on the 680 in 1600p performance, while the Gigahertz edition had gained 0.67% on the 680 at the same resolution. This was the time that these two generations were replaced by their successors, GeForce's 780 series and AMD's 290 cards. But we'll come back to that later, as we must resume following the 680 and 7970's journey. Fast forward 10 months to September 2014, two and a half years since the 680's launch. It had lost its lead over the 7970GHz edition at 1080p performance, though it was still a comfortable 10.34% faster than the regular 7970. Jumping up to 1600p, the 7970GHz edition's lead rose slightly to 4.7%, while the 680's lead over the regular 7970 had shrunk further to 3.28%. In 10 months, the 7970 had gained 1.41% on the 680 and 1600p performance, while the Gigahertz edition's relative advance of 0.29% is negligible in comparison. Sadly, Tech Power Up stopped benchmarking the 680 and 7970s midway into 2015, publishing their last benchmark of these cards in April 2015, three years since the 7970 and the 680 launched. At 1080p, even the regular 7970 had surpassed the 680, beating it by 3%. 2.5% in 
To put this into context, the 7970 performed 93% as fast as the 680 when the 680 launched three years prior. In a span of three years, the 7970 gained 10% on the 680, which was enough to completely turn the tables at 1080p performance. Meanwhile, the 7970GHz edition was 13% faster than the 680 at 1080p, a dramatic improvement from the 2% lead it launched with three years earlier. To summarize 1080p performance, the 7970GHz edition gained an incredible 11% on the 680 in just three years. Moving up to 1440p, the 7970 was an impressive 7.92% faster than the 680, while the Gigahertz edition was a massive 17.82% ahead of the 680. Tech Power Up had originally benchmarked these cards as 1600p, but later substituted that test for 1440p, so we shall treat it as a continuation of the same test and compare the relative performance changes. The 7970 was 96% as fast as the 680 when the 680 launched in March 2012. The 7970 gained a remarkable 12% on the 680 in just three years. When the 7970 GHz edition launched in 2012, it was 8.7% faster than the 680. In 2015, the GHz edition was 17.82% ahead of the 680, meaning it had gained 9.12% on the 680 in just three years. Let's move on to their successors, AMD's 290 series and Nvidia's 780 Ti. When they launched in 2013, the 780 Ti was 8.69% faster than the 290X set at Uber mode, while the 290 measured a mere 1.01% higher than the 780 at 1080p performance. Jumping up to 1600p though, the 780 Ti's lead over the 290X shrank to 7.52%, while the 290's lead over the 780 rose to 4.167%. Let's move on to Tech Power Up's December 2014 benchmark published more than a year since the 290s and 780Ti's launch. At 1440p, the 780Ti's lead over the 290X had shrunk to 1.92%, while the 290's lead over the 780 had risen to 10.34%. In their first year, the 290X had gained 5.6% on the 780Ti, while the 290 had gained 6.173% on the 780. Dropping down to 1080p though, the 780Ti was still ahead of the 290X by 6.12%, though this still means the 290X shrunk the gap by 2.57% in its first year. The 290 was 5.75% faster than the 780, a gain of 4.74% in its first year. Skip ahead 12 months to November 2015, two years since the 780Ti launched. The 290X had now surpassed the 780Ti in 1080p, performing 1.587% faster than the 780Ti. The 290X was 92% as fast as the 780Ti when it launched in November 2013, meaning it had gained an impressive 9.587% in just two years. Meanwhile, the 290 was 11.32% faster than the 780 at 1080p, a gain of 5.57% in its second year and an incredible 10.31% since its launch two years prior. Moving up to 1440p though, the 290X was 3.39% faster than the 780Ti. The 290X had gained 5.28% on the 780Ti in its second year, and over 10.39% since it launched two years prior. Meanwhile, the 290 was 18.75% faster than the 780, a gain of over 8.41% in its second year. Counting from its launch in November 2013, the 290 had gained 14.583% on the 780 in just two years. Fast forward another eight months to July 2016, Tech Power Up's last test of the 290s and 780s with the ASUS RX480 Strix benchmark. The 290X had lost its lead over the 780Ti in 1080p, while the 290's lead over the 780 rose to 16.2%. At 1080p, the 290 had gained nearly 5% in just 8 months, and over 15% since it first launched over 2.5 years ago. Moving up to 1440p, the 290X was now 6.59% faster than the 780Ti, a gain of 3.2% in just 8 months, and a relative improvement of 13.59% since it launched 2 years and 8 months prior. Meanwhile, the 290 was an incredible 23.28% faster than the 780, a gain of 4.5% in just eight months and a staggering gain of 19.11% since it launched in November 2013. 
Let's move on to the next generation. NVIDIA's 980 Ti and AMD's Fury X, both of which launched in June 2015. At this time, the 980 Ti was 14% faster than the Fury X at 1080p performance. At 1440p, AMD's Fury X was 9% behind NVIDIA's 980 Ti. One year later, the 980 Ti's lead shrunk to 3.8% for 1440p performance, and its 1080p lead had shrunk to 10.83%. Looking at 1440p, the Fury X had gained 5.2% on the 980 Ti in its first year, and closed the gap by 3.17% in 1080p performance. Two years later, the Fury X was 4% faster than the 980 Ti at 1440p performance, while the 980 Ti's lead at 1080p had shrunk to 2.53%. In its second year, the Fury X had gained almost 8% over the 980 Ti at 1440p performance, and at 1080p it had reduced 980 Ti's lead by a remarkable 8.3%. Three years later, the Fury X was 1.73% faster than the 980 Ti at 1440p, while the 980 Ti was 2.72% faster at 1080p performance. The Fury X's third year saw it lose 2.27% of its lead in 1440p performance, and an additional but negligible 0.2% in 1080p. Tech Power Up last benchmarked the 980 Ti and Fury X in February 2019. The 980 Ti was 1.4% ahead of the Fury X at 1080p, but the Fury X was 2.857% ahead at 1440p. The 980 Ti's 1080p lead had dropped by more than 12% since its launch, and the Fury X had gained more than 11.7% at 1440p performance, which was enough to overtake its competitor. Let's move on to the next generations, Polaris and Pascal. When the 1060 launched on July 19, 2016, the RX 480 performed 90% as fast as the 1060 at 1080p and 91% as fast as the GTX 1060 at 1440p. One year after they launched, the 480 now performed 98.39% as fast as the 1060 at 1440p, an improvement of 7.39% in its first year. The 480 showed the exact same improvement at 1080p, where it now performed 97% as fast as the 1060, up from 90% when it launched a year earlier. Two years after launch, the 480 performed 94.79% as fast as the 1060 at 1440p, meaning the 480 had lost 3.6% to the 1060 in 2018. Dropping down to 1080p performance, the 480 performed 94.84% as fast as the 1060, a loss of 2.16% in its second year. In two years, the 480 gained 4.84% in 1080p performance and 3.79% at 1440p. Tech Power Up last benchmarked the RX 480 in January 2019. The RX 480 was 93.5% as fast as the 1060 at 1080p and 93.2% as fast at 1440p. The RX 480 had gained more than 3% in performance compared to the 1060, but it wasn't enough to overtake the 1060 in Tech Power Up's benchmarks. Let's move on to AMD's next generation, Vega. At launch, the 1080 was 4% ahead of RX Vega 64 at 1080p performance, and just 1% ahead at 1440p performance. One year later, the 1080 was 4.8% faster than Vega 64 at 1080p performance, and 1.96% faster at 1440p performance. Fast forward another year to August 2019, the 1080's lead had shrunk to 1.2% at 1080p, while at 1440p Vega 64 had managed to overtake the 1080 with a 1.22% lead. Skipping ahead to August 2020, the GTX 1080 had fallen behind Vega 64 and was only 98.99% as fast at 1080p and an even slower 97% at 1440p. Tech Power Up stopped benchmarking the GTX 1080 in February 2021, at which point it had erased any performance differences at 1080p, though it was still slower at 1440p, only performing 97.8% as fast as the Vega 64. It took Vega 64 three and a half years to neutralize the GTX 1080's lead at 1080p, though its 3.2% improvement at 1440p performance was much more consequential, as it finally allowed Vega 64 to overtake the GTX 1080. 
Considering both cards were priced identically at the time of Vega's launch, this may not be as impressive as what we're about to see. Let's move on to AMD's next generation, RDNA. In July 2019, AMD launched the 5700 XT at $400 at the same segment as Nvidia's 2060 Super, even though the 5700 XT outperformed the 2070, which Nvidia priced at $500. The 2070 trailed the 5700 XT by 1% at 1080p and 2% at 1440p. The two cars performed identically at 4K. Fast forward to August 2020, the 5700 XT was 4.27% faster than the 2070 at 4K, 4.31% faster at 1440p and 3.478% faster at 1080p. Skip ahead to the 5700 XT's second year anniversary in July 2021, the 5700 XT was 9.09% faster than the 2070 at 1080p. 8.33% faster at 1440p and 4.76% faster at 4K. Fast forward to June 2022, the 5700 XT was 6.93% ahead of the 2070 at 1080p, 5.3879% faster at 1440p and 2.75% faster at 4K. Fortunes changed for the 2070 in October 2022 when Nvidia released a driver that substantially improved performance for RTX graphics cards. As a result, the 2070 achieved parity with the 5700 XT on all resolutions. The 2070 continued to rise through November 2022, even managing to overtake the 5700 XT. Fast forward to August 2023, the 2070 and 5700 XT had switched places again. The 5700 XT was more than 1% faster at 1080p, 3% faster at 1440p, and a little over 1% faster at 4K. Remember, the 5700 XT was $100 cheaper than the 2070. Fine wine indeed. Let's move on to the next generations, RDNA 2 and NVIDIA's 3000 series. This is what tech power up said about the changes in performance. The Radeon RX 6800 XT was 6% behind the GeForce RTX 3080 at 4K resolution. At 1440p, the difference was 4% and 6% at full HD. A lot has changed since then. Today, the performance difference has shrunk to 2.1% at 4K, 0% at 1440p, and 1.2% at Full HD. This means Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3080 is still faster than the Radeon RX 6800 XT, but AMD has caught up a lot. There seems to be a very clear trend showing that AMD's Radeon is running better and better in new releases. Since Tech Power Up did the hard work comparing the 6800 XT and 3080, let's look at the flagships, 6900 XT and 3090. When AMD launched their 6900 XT in December 2020, the 3090 was 5% faster at 1080p, 6% faster at 1440p, and 8% faster at 4K if the 6900 XT wasn't paired with the Ryzen using smart access memory. If SAM was in play, the 6900 XT performed much better, even overtaking the 3090 at 1080p. Fast forward to June 2022, the 3090 was 7.7% faster than the 6900 XT at 4K and 2.076% faster at 1440p. There was an insignificant difference at 1080p, which isn't bad considering AMD launched the 6900 XT $500 cheaper than the 3090, though the GPU shortage made these MSRPs irrelevant at the time. Nvidia's fine wine driver did not improve the 3090's performance quite as much as we've seen previously. The 6900 XT was faster than the 3090 by a single percentage point at 1080p and 1440p reversed this lead in the 3090's favor. Even at 4K, the 3090's lead had shrunk to 7%. November 2022 saw the margins between the two cards widen. At 4K, the 3090's lead rose to 8.45% while its lead in 1440p shrank to a single percentage point ahead of the 6900 XT. The 6900 XT had its own victory at 1080p, where its lead over the 3090 doubled to 2.298%. Fast forward to August 2023, the 3090 had overtaken the 6900 XT and was now 4.4% faster at 1080p, 5.6% faster at 1440p, and merely 10% faster at 4K. It looks like RDNA 2 ran out of fine wine in 2023. And that wraps up our analysis of AMD's fine wine. We'll let you draw your own conclusions from the numbers we crunched. And if you like this video, 
please share it.